going on guys i'm a little late to the party but i actually wanted to talk about the new echoes of wisdom trailer that had just dropped some more gameplay has leaked and um there's a few things that i noticed in this trailer that we don't really have like direct answers to but i wanted to just you know talk about it and just you know have a conversation with you guys about it just because it's something that i've always been curious about um so i just wanted to hop right into it i think it's really cool in this opening shot how we get a nice overview of the castle and the land. I mean, I know it's the top-down perspective, like Link's Awakening. I really have a feeling that they're trying to lean more into the Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom aspects of the games that worked well, and I'll get more into that a little bit later. But I remember them saying that going forward with Zelda titles, they wanted to make it a bit more open world for all of the titles. I'm assuming that's going to be with the 2D or 2.5D. I don't even know what this classifies as anymore because it's like top down, but it's 3D. So like, what is it? What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean anymore? And you get a nice little peak as like a little cracked wall on the bottom left there, bringing back some bombable walls. I'm a fan. I like it a lot. So a little bit further into the trailer, this is what I actually wanted to make this video about was the fact that we got to see the ocean Zora and the river Zora actually together in a game. It's been such a long time, so please correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was one of the Oracle games to where we saw, like the last time we saw these Zoras, like together in the same game. But I've always been so confused of like the River Zora and the Ocean Zora. When you think about Twilight Princess and like the Ocean Zora style have been in rivers and other games, and maybe you can explain the timelines. I don't really know. But I just thought that it was really cool, and hopefully we get a bit more information on it seeing both of these auras in this game because it seems like there's some feuding going on here uh i don't know maybe there'll be some side quests or something that involve them more where we learn a bit more about why they bicker so much i just think it's really interesting that they're taking note of putting them in the game together i think that's really cool uh i might be just getting my hopes up but i really hope that we learn a bit more about that i don't know why that makes me so excited. I don't know, man. I also really like the design of the overworld. All the different biomes and all the different towns, I think, are really cool. I like how all the villagers look really lively. The Gorons look really cool. It looks like they actually have some personality with their different hairstyles and stuff. And then you get into the Farron Wetlands where you actually get to see Deku Scrubs now. Like, it's been, at least for me, I feel like it's been so long since they've used these designs in these games. I'm so excited to see all these come back. It's like all my childhood favorites kind of like meshed up into one game i actually like the idea that side quests are being added to the game to kind of flesh out the world a little bit more i think that that's going to be really cool i see that they're taking a lot of inspiration even just from the like side quest menu from like breath of the wild and tears of the kingdom i think it'll help just build the world a little bit more so i'm really really stoked on that i'm glad that they're taking like a side quest approach for this top-down style game and hopefully like the rewards in those quests are worthwhile in some degree but you know only time will tell i'm wondering if the horse in this game is epona they don't outright say it and it just looks like a generic horse this is just kind of a little side tidbit i do like it a lot and maybe we'll get to name the horse but i'm really loving these different ideas of traversal in this game to just make it a bit more creative and imaginative with how you want to explore the world the smoothies seem really interesting like obviously they're not going to copy everything from every other game and i know i know that i'm not trying to like say that but you can definitely see where they're taking clear inspirations from instead of just cooking a bunch of materials it's like everything's just going to be smoothies so <laughs> we're just going to get like healing magic probably status effects things like that all in these like different smoothies i'm you know i'm open to it that's fine that also makes me wonder though like if defeating monsters are also going to drop parts like in the other games i don't know we'll just have to see i also really like that you get to change your clothes in this game i don't know why but i've always been a fan of just being able to customize your character with clothing i think that's really cool i think the bind mechanic is really cool i think having a lot of creative ways to solve puzzles and navigate dungeons it's that shrine approach that I really appreciated, um, even though I am kind of a hater of shrines. I just really like the idea, though, that everybody can do the same thing differently. A long time ago, Zelda had the opposite problem of having uh, the complaint of being too handholdy. So this being the alternative to where everybody can solve the same thing a different way, I think is really neat. It'll be really creative to see what people come up with. And I could honestly see this 
kind of breaking the game in a way i'm wondering being able to like climb over it seems like almost anything you see that spider like go over the tree you see the birds flying in the air being able to do all of this stuff like they have to have their hitboxes nailed down pretty well i'm really interested to see like from a speed running perspective how these are going to work with like breaking the game if nintendo's like really made sure that that's not really possible i mean people always find a way that's one of the first things i thought of when i saw like the different ways you can climb up walls and do stuff there's got to be like a no clip teleport to the end of the game like something crazy has to happen and they leave it off on a cliffhanger where zelda jumps into that purple goo through like a gold portal so is that going to be like a dark world of some sort or like, are we going to meet up with Link somehow since he was in the purple goo? I mean, I think this trailer is really well done. I personally don't think that they revealed too much, which I appreciate. I like that a lot. Um, leaving that in a little cliffhanger, you know, not showing too much before September comes out. I will say, though, that if they drop another trailer, I don't know if I'm going to be doing a video about it the way that I'm doing it now, because like the closer they get, the more that they show sometimes. So I don't want to spoil myself too much. I think it builds the hype up a little bit like, hey, you know, like, don't forget about this game. We're still here. It's coming out like next month, which is crazy to think about that. They've just had this in their back pocket. I'm really, really stoked. But that's really it. I just wanted to get on here and kind of just shoot the shit and, you know, talk about this trailer with you guys. Let me know what you guys are excited about, what you saw in the trailer, any sort of speculations or guesses or theories that you have let me know how i'm wrong about the river and oceans aura and how they've been in games before and how i don't know the lore because that's probably accurate i'll be completely honest but yeah i mean it's just been it's been a minute since i did something just like this and you know if you guys want to see more of that just let me know but cool that's it for now have a good night peace out